Hey guys, it's LSR. Um, haven't uploaded yet in a while. Today I figured after all the influx, well not today, I think throughout this time after winter has graced us and people are here, maybe people want to see some new videos. And I had a lot of idea, ideas in my mind, uh, something about build powers, uh, but I thought maybe, maybe let's start with something easy on how to play and maybe improve your frontline overall. Um, for me, this game, likely as it is for you, is some uh, learning experience. Um, I generally play safe, defensive uh, macro build. I'm not overly aggressive, except when I see the chance to maybe create some chaos. Uh, so let's just dive in. Uh, I'm going to mostly... Uh, freestyle this and we're gonna talk about uh, some concepts which uh, I'm practicing, the concepts which you should apply and how it's overall going on. While we starting let me just uh, click on me and do play your camera. Uh, as you see the general build order um, always start in the middle of the two metal extractors and uh, I prefer solar. Why did I prefer the solar? Because the wind at that point was below um, 12. Um, that's my go-to. Uh, chat GPT maybe said that's the correct metal efficiency. Sadly, I cannot give you the formula right now, and maybe it lies, but that's what I go for. It works for me. After that, I uh, usually slap around two windmills, maybe three. Uh, the core idea before you go bot lab is to have around 60 energy income, as you can see right here on the top that the drain on the commander making lab is 69 and we generally want to have more or less close to full energy once we finish the lab uh, going down to zero installing isn't a good idea after that we start to add energy uh, and you want to add energy around the same place where you could boost the lab um, I decide to open the grunt here. Uh, usually I like constructor or even two constructors, uh, but since I'm on the front line and uh, I could use this unit to, to first see who I'm reversing with, but uh, I already metagaming here a little bit. I know uh, I'm going to be playing against the aqua right here. Here you can see once we have enough energy, I did boost the lab a little bit and um, continue to make wind right here. Um, I try to keep my energy as full as possible and focus on building the power. I decided to go out of the lab really quickly, uh, but that doesn't stop me from getting another con. Uh, technically, it's considered greedy. Uh, I consider greedy not having two uh, grunts here, because if the fleas run, it's hard to chase them down. After I have con two constructors, that's enough build power for me, so I will move to the front and grab the metal extractors. Um, here I have the, uh, that same flea coming in. I react with the grunt, but uh, luckily uh, everything went all right. Um, I could have placed this mech maybe here. I don't know why I did it like that. Uh, probably due to the mech snap. Um, uh, if you noticed, um, let me turn my camera and do the player view. I still intercept all my flea, enemy fleas or ticks uh, there. And I also managed to get the third constructor, which means we are now in a decent deficit, right? Um, on the front line, um, generally, I'm playing pretty greedy, relying here on the units. Um, I don't notice the scout, actually, um, and you can, uh, you know, pay for it. Uh, let me just maybe pause a little bit and just uh, talk about it, right? So I did Mex, Mex, and the radar in order to have this information. I didn't see the scout. I thought it maybe was ally scout. Oh, happened. <laughs> Green is not the color that associates, with, uh, associates me with red or blue here. Um, so I let the scout in. And as you can see, I already pre-made three Rocco's. This is pretty, pretty greedy build. Uh, generally, you want to... Um, have like more grunts uh, and uh, and otherwise you will be losing mixes but that's fine right so it doesn't really uh, affect me my commander is getting moved and here you can see another thing since this is the metal right 
I'll go and start with an LLT and then uh, do the max right there. And enemy scout uh, kills two of my metal extractors. That's not too bad. We'll talk about the adjustments like this before. So here we have a immediate problem. Uh, Aqua isn't uh, a rookie and he will immediately come and deny me from uh, getting that front LLT. Ways you can stop it is you can maybe put your commander body and then build an LLT behind. That would uh, put him up to the decision whether he wants to combo us or not. Uh, so our adjustment to getting raided right here is I immediately made Resbot. If you don't know, or I think Winter probably told everybody, you can queue up with the alt. So you could uh, raise up the mechs from the dead. And I'll do that right now here. Uh, getting early Rockos is pretty good because most of your opponents won't have an answer if their general playstyle is get to the middle and make LLTs and it's really really annoying uh, to deal with it. Um, personally I'm not that uh, keen on making LLTs in team games especially in the positions which are close but if the map is bigger or you have to control bigger space LLTs are obviously amazing units or defense and really good units to defend your commander. Um, I repair my grunts and, you know, keep skirmishing. Uh, most uh, guys like five to six uh, Rockos. I like personally getting three early because three is a really good number to deny enemy LLTs and, uh, you know, move on and I keep my army a little bit separate uh, I have the LLT covering here line and so that enables me to put my army more to the middle as you can see Resbot has also finished this and would be ready to go I have the another constructor which was um, the, one of the third commanders just gonna come and help my commander here to maybe build some advanced stuff um, my goal for this game was to practice building some more advanced buildings here we are pretty low but we get lucky uh, the enemy is afk i think he could have run and technically he couldn't run we also have an ally with the tanks so it's all good and um, let me just do it a little bit slower the reason why I sent this constructor is to, you know, have my metal a little bit more. But additionally, I really quickly switched to the plasma bots. And uh, since plasma bots, I like them. I think beginners sh could definitely find value in these uh, skirmishes, which you have like more fixed lane. Um, I personally, when I started this game, I found plasma bots to be excellent those were the units i've gotten like more confident i was able to kill much um, higher skilled players than me early game uh, they're incredible pushers just an all-round good assault unit uh, rocket bots are more uh you know just for skirmishing so as you can see we already from tier one units we are using some grunts to raid this backline we have these we, we had the rocket bots skirmishing on the front and we have the assault bots also uh, coming in and helping and the, we have the res bots and we have the constructors on the front and we're only like five minutes and so you want your front line to have like a little bit of diversity right and my attack uh, pushes uh, my ally to also try his luck into the attacking all right so any changes at the base still not um pumping thuds on repeat i generally keep my cues like this i put one unit and i just use repeat most of the time and then mix whatever units i want or i do clear the queue and make something new all right so moving on uh we have secured this metal um uh, i've could have resurrected maybe these other wrecks right but uh generally just uh, if we look, uh, we have the Rockos on the fight, Resbots on the move, and suddenly we run into some dumb rockets and uh, do not get it. So if we look at the map right now, right? So we have made onto the middle, right? So what you guys don't see in the background, that like six minutes in here, 
as a frontliner, I had the metal. I'm I'm still making a couple of thuds, but what you don't see in the background that I already have commissioned and paid for T2 Con that's coming to my base six minutes in. So in general, I will be not trying to uh, to make a lot of units to kill a guy here because it will also trigger a more wide response from the team, uh, his team, right? So right now my opponent is a little bit struggling versus me. But, um, you know, I'm not going to try to, you know, uh, kill him right here since I've got the T2 con and uh, I, I predict that uh, I need to like, get all this T2 economy going, especially. I don't need to go T2 yet, but I need to grab that T2 um, uh, economy uh, six minutes in. Here, uh, you can make an exploiter. I decided to make an exploiter here. As I said, I'm practicing with um, building more defenses in this game um, because that's my, one of the, I think, weakest parts of my game. I just make a lot of units and usually <laughs> push the men. So I'm trying to improve my porking uh, style. So if we're not going to kill him, I'm going to look for some opportunities. I split off some army. I see some units here and they look particularly weak. Uh, they have some pounders, which uh, my uh, th uh, thugs are pretty good uh, good against. So I push those back. Uh, I also go out and threaten my uh, threaten and I help out these two guys here. I think that's good because I have more or less uh, some army to hold this off. Uh, I should have more res bots, but you know, it is what it is. I see a lot of artillery, but I'm also able to put some pressure on one of their uh, top, top homies right there, right? So, uh, it's all good. Every time we push the calm off, my res bot is already running there to grab all the metal. Uh, if we were holding a little bit here, just delaying the enemy, right? Uh, let's look at the base for a second. So our base, we have the T2 has arrived. We have the uh, Twitcher already making... I'm making more and better uh, energy right here. So as long as we just generally keep the middle and don't, you know, provoke the enemy too much, we should be in a pretty good position, right? I doubt... Um, my opponent has all of the same things uh, being done right now, right? Stalling a little bit of energy. Um, gonna retreat my army over here, right? So what I did is I think once you have enough army that you think, oh, oh, it's okay. Uh, I, you can stop the uh, production. But that comes with an experience, right? You need to be able to remember whether you are making army or do you want to make army or you don't want to make army and that's enough army, right? Since my goal is to invest in T2 economy right now and more uh, power and, and, and then solar. I see these artilleries which are kind of scary because there's so many of them, right? So I go a little bit to just like to show enemy that I'm active. Uh, I heal my calm and my calm is gonna heal some units, right? Meanwhile, um, you know, uh, while I'm still making this economy. If you try to do units same time as economy, you will generally slow both of them down, right? So I, the way I play it, I try to do it like really focused, right? I, tend to either make units or I either make economy. I, I usually don't make four or five things at once. Uh, and if I do, I think it's like uh, not really, really optimal. And I try to prioritize something. There's multiple ways you can prioritize. You have these high priority things as well on what you want to build. And right now you can see that uh, I'm clearly not in uh, best shape. But I don't think it's worthwhile. I give space to the enemy, right? I still have so much ground to me. Uh, and, you know, me falling back also gives my allies time to respond. But here I decide to fight since, you know, this exploiter is in a good position. I put my res bots to heal them and I skirmish with my plasma bots. I could maybe, you know, have my calm a little bit further, but uh, um, 
I already managing some uh, multiple unit types right here. So I go in and uh, seeing that my allies is also here, encourages me to step forward. And you know, uh, we have all of the required troops here. So I get an excellent help from my allies usually. Uh, I usually somehow get mostly good allies all of the time. Uh, one of the maybe perks of getting friendly. So here we do leave quite a bunch of the metal to the enemy, right? So it's like uh, almost a, a thousand, but we're rich ourselves, so it isn't stopping us uh, or anything. And we haven't lost the line, so save the rest. But I, since I lost my uh, current army, I will make some units uh, just so we have, but you know, it's like 10 to 12 units to hold the front line. It's completely fine because I don't see much threat from the like the artillery, at least not in a way that could, you know, raid my base. I have finished my, um, how do you say? I have finished my base upgrades with the metal extractors and have assigned more constructors, which were chilling in the base to the T2 to slowly just get more economy. Right, um, and here I figure, okay, I think locking down the middle here is fine. Um, um, I'm pretty low on energy, but so is everybody due to the wind being really, really low. Uh, here I rally some T2 troops. It was more of not like, hey, I'm gonna do this attack. It's just like to show my lane opponent, hey, I have T2 units. You should be very scared of me, right? But it's... You could say I have those units and they are good, but it's mostly just a bluff, you know, worth like 800 metal. I definitely don't want to lose these units without uh, opportunity, but I'm showing, hey, I have T2, I'm a threat, you know, if you come here, you'll get uh, destroyed. So bar is also a little bit of, uh, you know, you cannot tell what your opponent really has, because if you see T2, uh, and you don't have, uh, I, I would assume, like, yeah, my opponent doesn't have. It's pretty scary to go on to the attack, which means for me, if I show T2 here, right here, which I got from Twitcher, my, it's hard for opponent. And that allows me to just, you know, uh, get fusion at, um, just from basic solars, you know, one advanced solar right here. I accidentally over make cons here. <laughs> I bet this happens to all, but uh, you can eat them quite rapidly, right? So you can see um, what's going on. So right now, nothing's really going on and I'm practicing, you know, my frontline stuff. Um, using these uh, flamer turrets are really good. These pop-up defense turrets. I'm gonna set up my jammer. So the enemy can't really see my army. Um, can be both good and bad, but you know, they had the artillery, so it's a little bit scary for me. Should definitely grab the radar. Um, sometimes it's hard to tell immediately that you lost the radar uh, and you don't have like the radar coverage. Right, so here I will try to go for an attack because my fusion is approaching the completion. And, um, you know, I didn't see what 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 was going on there. I dive in, nothing massively. Realize I won't get through. Self-destruct a couple of things. Likely not worthwhile at all. But uh, I didn't try to leave any wrecks or metal, and that's another raid uh, off their mechs. Uh, while you know I, I'm on T2 mechs right here. So while this game doesn't show like the hardships of an actual front line because. I don't know how I was able to push enemy off the mid by T2 and cam my opponent like kind of into uh, into defending. Uh, we got a really good shot, right? So my objective still stays the same. If you see on the mini map, we have the hill. Our backline is like is stacking and making tanks, where we were pretty good, right? So, um. I'm reclaiming my all of my old solars and unneeded stuff and right now when I have you know these mixes and the fusion already made I'm saying okay I think we're good to go T2 
since uh, this was situational, there was no need for me to rush D2 here because, you know, I wanted to finish all of my economy and the enemy isn't threatening or there is no pressure for me to go T2. So why should I go T2 if I can, you know, keep on tier one units and just get uh, all of the T2 things first? Um, here I add some defenses and I send my commander a little bit to the back just because we generally don't have that big of an army. Uh, we're gonna hold, we're holding the middle and um, I'm making a couple of the, 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 the defenses, I'm making a couple of an AA structures. I already have the, for example, eradicator in the base, which is really good if the bombers come for me or my backline alley. Um, and uh, right now I'm focusing. Okay, so if he isn't a threat, maybe I can go help my allies with, you know, these skirmish bots. Um, and then I see the air. That may, that's really scary, actually, uh, in general. So I will definitely add more anti-air. Somehow nothing shows. No new crush. Um, and I have to say that I also said to my ally to build an anti-nuke here, which he did, uh, thanks to the, him. I also will not get nuked. And right now I'm just uh, focusing on the army, more AA versus like drones, uh, EMP stun drones, right? And right now I'm just gonna skirmish in the mid, see what we can do. Um, have some units in the front line. Um, my allies seem active in this region as well, so why not? I should like slow, start to slowly siege them um, while making some, you know, T2 pop-up artilleries. This T2 bot is here to uh, help me secure the middle for our team, right? So the fleas get in, uh, gets a lot of aggressive things, and I use this, you know, scary moment to push in as well. Uh, I use the runs for the vision uh, and uh, trying to locate the sneaky uh, flame turrets. This is an interesting uh, tank defense line, but you know, I'm able to skirmish and it might even be harder for uh, them to get to my skirmish bats other than the other way around. I push in, so we retreat. I must have looked somewhere else. So let's take a look at the base. Nothing really changes. I'm so rich, I actually try to get the Mammoth out. The reasoning behind the Mammoth is, is if I'm fighting in the north, then I might position like a really strong defensive unit here. But actually, there was no need to do that. My ally has made me a nice set of defenses and also has like these big Tsars and Banishers here. If he was... Um, not busy as much with his base, he might be able to inflict some damage, but, you know, he still recognizes that uh, he needs to put army here, which for like the 10, uh, uh, 10 skill, skill rated guy is really, really good from his side. So, <laughs> as I said, I think I usually get really, really good allies. Uh, here I go in and uh, get some metal, you know, and keep Slowly pushing them back, uh, give breathing room to the allies. Uh, for me, this game kind of looks one if we, you know, do not get bombed, uh, do not get nuked, uh, maintain air defense. So I'm allowing my allies to maybe find opportunities instead of, you know, me doing all the work because mm, I'm expecting our eco guys to do their job. I expect if somebody wants to go air, it should probably someone from the back line. I just need to be able as a frontline here to hold the middle as long as possible, especially if we have we control like 60% of the map and, you know, make sure that uh, maybe everybody gets their like T2 uh, mixes and stuff, right? So one of the improvements is I could have helped upgrade these metal mixes for my allies um, and all of those things. But what I'm focusing here uh, is uh, generally having like defensive structures controlling key points um, and that's what I have we have like the AA and we have um, plasma artilleries um, and all of that stuff right I haven't gotten to upgrade these mixes which is a mistake from me but I've been you know focusing on uh, 
kind of pressuring their north as much as we can since um, I don't know what Aqua is doing uh, but against the Aqua here my idea was to defend against his attack and um, I'm ready for that defense so I should move my attacking unit somewhere else if I did not focus on making defense I would likely attack my lane opponent right um, all right so here you can see that I'm transitioning away I add um, six uh, CTs some construction turrets in short in order to have like this um, grunt spam going on and that will help me with the vision as you can see I've run out of uh, disposable units to say uh, for the front line so my Sheldons are just uh, chilling I'm also making an anti nuke in the middle and I plan to also make the one of the super big turrets I think it's bulwark um I don't even know the name um so skipping forward oh and I think we missed the big part of it where my big metal went is that um I already start the pension fund here in the back. That's all the APHIS, you know, my ally is getting those. Uh, and I don't, uh, since I think I did all of what I should have done as a frontliner here, and I'm securing and holding middle, I, des I think I deserve my little pension fund, you know, have a later fund in case the things go wrong. So that's going on I'm also just ate my t1 lab and I'm gonna right now rely more on the spams and you know my artillery so be sure to you know switch up between the techs eat your t2 lab into investing the economy uh, and keep some mobile units right so because if I do not look to get any more T2 units right now to the, to push them, uh, I have the strong defensive line here, I have some skirmishers, and I will have uh, some mobile units for defense, offense, and all the scouting operations as the utility, right? So uh, our opponent here, Aqua, has decided to get Lugers, which is fine. He does bait us into the fight, and... Um, Let's just watch what uh, happens. He shoots himself. <laughs> Basically, he triggers us uh, and then pings us when we move on to attack him. They got a the pretty solid defense right here. Multiple uh, dragon claws, the ally have tanks, everybody dropping their forces right now. So I'm also going in. And uh, yeah, we're going to make a big metal pile. Uh, there's also a couple starlights from uh, Stardom which are pretty pretty scary units right so we do our best to push in and actually this results in a pretty big feed from us uh, we try to get most of them and you know dead lord also moves his units on the front but uh, overall i think this attack was well we did pressure them a pretty big disaster mostly due to the fact that uh, we left like there's like 14,000 metal here in the wrecks, mostly with the banishers and you know their tigers and our tsars. And my mammoths also are really really expensive. So we, when I actually start this scouting operation, I think we should have first scouted you know skirmish, see if there's any opportunities, and then skirmish from the sides. Instead, we dove deep, and you know we are pressured to now actually retreat leaving 10 to 14,000 metal which is pretty big but it's kind of good since you know we still have defense and um, it's it's okay but uh, soon the issue is that the armada with the sieging uh, with the starlights and the ticks rallying in uh, can deal with uh, our metal defenses and it's generally not good um, for us so uh, here I was really unsure on how should I proceed versus the starlights uh, while I did have some spam the main idea was that you know this uh, my, my, my backline Aphis was building maybe if I've spent you know 9,000 
metal on some better units, it would be better. Uh, here I don't notice, I quickly notice, but you know, it's really, really bad that uh, I couldn't micro. And you know, here's where it gets a, uh, a lot more dodgy, right? So we actually do not have any response from uh, for the starlights. They, I think, have resurrected our tank, as you can see here. Uh, they kind of maybe, you know, after our failed attack, they were switched into more units and they just been making more units. And suddenly we are in this like crisis control. Hey, is that's actually not looking all that great, right? So I do rally in some scouts to maybe, you know, try to delay them at least. Uh, but you can see they're like resurrecting everything. That's pretty, pretty bad. Uh, Thankfully, our eco uh, guy has, uh, you know, made some bombers and gets literally five bombers in. Blows up a fusion, which blows up everything else. So it's just five T2 bombers getting into their defense. Uh, completely negates uh, stardom's, you know, uh, backline economy advantage. Uh, I think he still gets, you know, his Starlight's power to some means, but uh, mostly because the teammate gave fusion to him immediately to fire with the Starlight's, but uh, I've lost my commander. I actually cannot figure out what I wanted to do. I figured uh, maybe the fastest way to have some defenses, maybe to make heavy mines. Um, but, and then I go, maybe I go T2 then, because maybe T2 units, like the enemy has Tigers right here. But you know, these Tigers uh, drive through T1 uh, walls as well, so actually not holding all that well, so. Uh, I remember being really, really panicked because I was just ready to, you know, kill some ticks with Junos, have like nice middle defense. But right now I'm in full, full panic mode and our defense is crumbling against an actual assault of multiple people. So, yeah. I was really unsure on what to do in this scenario, but I think what I've got it at the end is that I'm just gonna scrap everything out of my base, right? So. If you let, if I let my structures get destroyed by enemy here, and I'm into the salvage mode, it's 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 not good. So I quickly eat my whole lab. That gives me, you know, three thousand metal. Uh, I keep pumping units. I try to eat the lab here, eat another lab, and uh, I'm setting up the T2 shop right there. Since I do have my pension fund, and here I try to reclaim. Uh, all of these extra structures um, would be nice if I was able to, you know, I think I had made the resbots yeah, maybe eat a fusion. That's uh, four, th four and a half thousand metal sending there. But right now I'm just like, OK, uh, I did good from the game. I retire to my uh, things. It's 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 not my issue. As you can see, the Red Lord light like, here is really ambitious with his uh, advanced fusion uh, but luckily for me mom's boy toy being an absolute chad comes in with abductors of all things uh stunning enemy units and picking them up i thought this was just also amazing to show uh oh no 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 what's going on right here so uh even if the units you know get uh like these abductor units get shut down it's really they still, if they manage to pick it up, the unit will be still lost. Uh, we also have like a random dragon here, so I'm assuming our team is rich. Uh, well, do they get? Well, they do get their, you know, uh, resing potential. Okay, so as you can see, if we did maintain the um, res bot fleet, we might be able to either eat or, you know resurrect the enemy will get all of this uh, juicy juicy metal there's like 4000 here at least the stardom will like effectively nab it uh, so that's it but uh, i think the team has recognized me that you know this position isn't that great and uh, everybody's kind of rallying to my troops uh, 
my you know former base here and uh, I think that's generally it from the game I just generally wanted to show you this frontline stuff and you know losing the base and you know having maybe something in the back I think it's fine to maybe have something in the back in case you do think it's uh, you might get you know rushed down but or you ask your allies to have something down because right now here due to me being able to invest in Aphis right now I just I can just recover really really easily there's nothing hard about recovering here you have the energy in the back and you have the metal right so I immediately grab um, these T1 mixes I set up some basic defenses so I don't get raided by the scouts I set up the nanos back Tier 1 mix is always, tier 1 mix is always good uh, when it's pumping. And I'm gonna scrap this metal. And my, my, my next door ally didn't die. So while they did destroy me, uh, nothing really changed for that long. As long as the team is able to come down. So I think that generally covers off uh, my ideas. I think... I had these abductors, that's really good, I'm gonna use them for support, and uh, I'm still able to get one more Aphis, more stuff, and right now I'm able to resume the unit production from the back lines and be back in a fight uh, in order to help my team win, so I think that covers the frontline basics. Um, let me know if you have any questions or any topics you want to do due to the winter gaming. Uh, participating in these i think uh if somebody wants to see more focused topics um, give me a note you can find me on discord or write in the youtube chat everything's really cool so let's just you know skip to the end and i catch you guys later then